five, four, three, two, one. Hello, good morning. Good morning, guys. Buenos dias. It is uh, Sunday night for us, Monday morning for you guys. Yes. And uh, this is the daily devotional. We do this Monday through Friday. We pre-record them. That way we can um, have it premiere at three o'clock in the morning because we have a lot of East Coast people that like to watch it at... Um, what's it called? It's flipping. Oh, and um, that way it releases at six in the morning for those East Coasters. That way they can be able to also take advantage of the morning devotional. Yeah. Yep. So it is uh, been a really nice hot day. Yeah. Today. We can't complain, guys. I know there's some of you that have. Oh, I'm complaining. Much, much hotter days. Oh, I'm complaining. I'm not, guys. It was hot. Yeah, my drama king over here is complaining. <laughs> so, um, shout out to the Phoenix House of Rest, uh, yeah. Michelle Paleo and Tony Paleo. Yes. Um, they had the cops called on them. I didn't tell you. He was just telling me right now. No. Yeah, but it was toward the end of service. As you guys know, they have um, the churches in the backyard of a house that they have. And um, for whatever reason, a neighbor called the cops. So... Um, it was toward the end, and I guess he just wrote his name down and just left. I mean, it's his backyard, you yeah. know? So, um, but yeah, shout out to Phoenix House and, of Rest. And what was it for, just because of... A, Probably noise. I'm guessing. During the day? I guess. Maybe somebody wanted to sleep in on Sunday morning. I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to call him tomorrow and see and find out a little bit more about it. Well, the enemy really doesn't want to allow the lord to to do works in that area huh yeah yeah we gotta we gotta keep a uh, house arrest phoenix in prayer you mm -hmm. know that whole area guys we gotta really inundate it with uh with lots of prayer yeah we gotta we gotta pray guys we gotta pray that those walls and that anything that is uh that is trying to build any type of uh, walls or any anything that is just trying to come against them right now to be broken. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely, we got to come together, guys. Amen. 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 So <clears throat> other than that, we had our Sunday service. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to join us, you know, and, and um, you know, and, and just worship with us and be with us, and fellowship with us, even though it's through the phone. You know, um, and if you didn't, then hopefully you get an opportunity to uh, to listen in, you know, listen to the sermon and, and see if the Lord speaks to you through it. You know, that's the whole idea is uh, our whole church, man, is, is to me, a lot of times most churches, most people think Sunday is the main event, I guess, if I guess lack of a better term. Right. Yeah. Um, for us. For the last 10 years. It's uh, a day of celebration. Yeah, it's a day of celebration. The To me, the real meat, 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 to grow and learn is Wednesday. Wednesday Bible study has always been a really important thing for us, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that um, uh, Sunday, man, is a day of celebration, a day of getting together, and it's a good thing. Yeah, and I think we've been, uh, we've been talking a little bit more about... Um, about just really pushing our Wednesdays a little bit more and expanding more on Wednesdays to where, you know, we really want to invite our families out to come, you know, because I know that, um, you know, we haven't really pushed Wednesdays as much as to where we want mm -hmm. people to come out. We want the families to come out and be able to experience um, Wednesdays. And I know a lot of the times, you know, people stay in and, and everything, but we want to be able to... I know eventually I've, I had a meeting with our, our teachers um, this weekend, you know, and one of the things that we want to we want to implement um, for Wednesdays is to also have um, the children's on Wednesdays as well. Yeah, guys, we're <clears throat> we, we, that's we, we've been talking. Yeah, about. we've been talking and I'm just going to share with you now um, yeah. that we're going to not take away from Wednesday. We're actually going to add yes. on Wednesday. Um, because I think a lot of people don't like change. I don't like change. I love the way we do Wednesday Bible study. The same format, same everything. I sit behind that table with the little globe and the, what's it called? The hourglass, the right? hourglass, yeah. Yeah, but um, 
what's happening is, uh, man, a lot of families are literally, they go through hell all week. Yeah. And they need a time to just come of refreshing, of, of, of worship, of prayer. prayer. Um, so what's going to happen is we're still going to figure out how to do it. But basically, um, right now we're at 7 to 8. Yeah, we're at 7 to 8. eight so, o'clock. yeah, so it's going to probably stretch from 7 to like 8.20. Mm-hmm. Um, 7 to 8.30. Yeah, at the most. At the most. At the most. Yeah. Um, we're going to implement some worship at the beginning, you yeah. know, and it's instead, instead of maybe three songs, you're There's thinking two. Songs. two. I'm thinking two songs. Yeah, maybe. start off with um, some, prayer, some prayer, prayer, two songs of worship. And uh, what did you call? I like the way you called it a study. Uh, no, uh, uh, it's a, a teaching service. A teaching service. So I'm not going to preach. It's going to be the same. So other than the Bible study, the way we do it, there's going to be worship and prayer in the beginning, two mm-hmm. songs, and it'll end with prayer because what's happening too is so many of you are asking for prayer. Yeah. You know, and, and um, we want to actually make that part of our Bible study. So basically, it's like going to be a Sunday service, but instead of preaching, it's going to be teaching. So be teaching. the table's going to be there. Everything's the same. The little globe and everything. And the interaction's going to stay the same, guys. Yeah, everything's going to stay the same. But you know, um, you know, I, I like I said, I did have a, I had a really nice, extensive um, meeting with the teachers this mm-hmm. this um, Saturday. And we sat here and we were able to um, brainstorm together yeah. and everything. And it was wonderful because that's something that we're going to do more often. Um, and, you know, and we just talked about, you know, the importance and the growth of the children. And and I think our children, with everything that our kids are facing um, now in days as well, I think we need more for our kids. Um, there's just more that we want to pour into our children as well. Mm-hmm. And as you guys know... Um, the same how to hear God's voice uh, curriculum that um, David has taught on, you know, on if you guys go back to, uh, there's a playlist for how to hear God's voice for the adults. Well, we have that also for our children. And that's something that we want to implement for our children. And there's, you know, um, before identity is taught, how to hear God's voice is something that we want to teach our children because we're going to be teaching identity for children as well. And um, I know that that's something that I'm looking forward to, David, writing a, a, a handbook or something for the children on identity as well. So I'm excited about that, and I know that that's coming. And I said, well, why don't I go ahead and why don't I go ahead and do that? You know, I think that would be really, really great. And and just you know implement for children because I know that a lot of the times families hold back on coming on weekdays too because of the children yeah and that's a great opportunity for the kids to come in possibly if they got some homework to finish well they can do that as well but at the same time we can you know get them to do a little bit of um study time with the word as well Mm -hmm. and maybe we can go alongside with whatever's being taught you know in in you know the study uh, in Bible study, we, maybe we can teach some somewhere along the line as well. Yeah, well, this is, you know, Sharon, we were driving, and she's like, hey, I want to put something in your ear. I forgot how you said it. And um, when she brought up about actually having worship for the Bible study Wednesdays, what caught my attention, this is her selling point, <laughs> and what caught my attention was the fact when she said this, and I haven't even told her this, is when she said, I want to open up for children's. Because here's the thing is there's a lot of people that want to come to Bible study, but it's not really a children's environment. So I think a lot of people that would like to come don't come because we don't have nothing for children. And um, so on the weekdays, yeah, on the weekday, on Wednesdays, you know, so we only do it on Sundays. But by implementing that on Wednesday, I think it would give a lot of people that don't come Wednesdays an opportunity because they want more, yeah. you know. And we have, of course, we, you know, we are, um, we have classroom, we have, you know, the toddler area, we have everything um, for the children. So can I have water, honey? I don't have water. (coughs) Can you give me my tea? So I think it'll be um, a great opportunity. Um, Oh, I do have water. Yeah, thanks. I thought you did. It's okay. I didn't even know I put it there. 
so guys um i just want to i just want to be able to give um the children more and i know that we have youth that also come the youth that also come on wednesdays and i know that our youth is actually on fridays mm -hmm. so i thought it'd be a great opportunity to implement our youth to help out with the children mm -hmm. on wednesdays um which is something i'm looking forward to they can be like a teacher yeah. aid or something but it gives us an opportunity to teach the youth how to prepare for a lesson to help the children mm -hmm. and what that does it will teach the youth to go and study for a lesson to help with the children. Yeah. And what they'll do, it'll give them a responsibility to go home and be like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta actually get into the word and learn about what it is that they have to teach the kids on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I just think it's um it's a it's a win-win situation all the way around for everybody, I think, um, for us to implement a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited, guys. Yeah. I know that. You know, um, when we'll we'll start doing this, I, I don't know how well, soon my, I'm thinking as soon as August. Possibly. Yeah, my thing is the first week of August. That way yeah. it starts a new a new uh, month differently. So we'll probably be talking about this a few more times in case a few people don't watch this devotional, but they'll watch another. So, yeah. Um, anyways, the subject that we wanted to talk about was this. Is um, I, I, I see a lot of YouTube channels that they'll do like movie reviews or they'll do... Uh, product reviews things like that and sometimes they're songs we choose uh songs sharon chooses or we both choose or and, and we implement it into the worship and then it kind of gets put on rotation i guess it gets put into our our library yeah our library of songs we do and i guess i wanted to go a little deeper on once in a while why we choose a song like what stood out, yeah. you know, and I think that helps because maybe it's a song you haven't been introduced to or you haven't really paid attention or kind of lets you know the workings behind of why we choose some songs and not others. Yeah. And and I know that if, if you've probably been with us for a while, I'm sure you've probably heard them because, I mean, we don't have that many guys, you yeah. know, because... Without a, a live worship band, there's only so many we can do with the program that we use, multi-tracks. And, you know, with multi-tracks, um, we're, you know, it, it, they are pricey, the songs that we mm -hmm. get. And, you know, um, they're, they are, we do purchase our songs um, through there. And it's a whole system that we have to use and that I, I, I actually work with. And I'm maneuvering it up there while I'm, I'm up there. Um, but you probably hear them often if you've been with us for some time. So you probably already know some of them by heart already. So this is a very familiar song to some of the yeah. regulars. Yeah, so I want to say this too real quick is the reason we purchased them is back in the day when House of Rest first started, um, I would literally extract, in extract instrumentals from YouTube. <laughs> And when you extract instrumentals, instrumentals from YouTube, the quality is, is usually not good. And um, so we got told about this program. And then when because for a minute with C3, remember, mm -hmm. we learned that the actual bands, the original singers of these bands, mm -hmm. basically um, put their music up. They play the instrumentals and they allow churches like us that don't have musicians to purchase these songs with the full instrumental by the actual band. You know, like if it's Jesus Culture, if it's Hillsong, or I don't, I don't know a lot of the groups Sharon does, you know, but so we actually, let me show, let me see that real quick over there. So like, we actually say each of these is songs. This is Freedom, this is Here is in Heaven. No, notice the Confident. And um, we're able to download the songs from it's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm not trying to get into a big old technical video about it, but um, this one song, what are you doing? Lyrics? Yeah. Yeah. The song today I wanted to talk about, Sharon wants to talk about, is the song Confident by, what's her name? Uh, Stephanie. I don't I, even know how to say her last name. I know. It's, um, it's a little bit hard. Hold on. It's hard to. Gretzinger? Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie Gretzinger. So it's that song, Confident. 
that, um, and we're not going to break down the whole thing, but this is what stood out. Well, what stood out to you first? And I want to tell you what stood out to me. What stood out, what's the, if I said, what stood out to you that made you love this song? Um, first of all, well, the music's amazing. Well, yeah, I, I, I love the beat. I mean, I was number, number one, I was the one that listened to it first. Mm -hmm. I kind of introduced you to, because this number one is kind of more of my, my style of, yeah. of, of singing, um, mm -hmm. worship. But then at the same time, um, I'm more of an in-depth worshiper i'm i'm more of a ad-lib worshiper i've always told him that um freestyle type worshiper when somebody just plays piano or they in and i love to just you know ad-lib worship and when i hear stuff like that when somebody just shares their heart and just starts to sing that type of worship um it i gravitate towards that you know and when i hear that the words um i listen to the words guys and when I heard her words, all of them, I was like, wow, it was, it was powerful. Like you're, you're always, you know, moving in the unseen, you know, mm. I'm confident, um, you know, your faithfulness will see me through. And it just reminds me about me and it just talks about me, Yeah. you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like confident because I know, I know where I came from. I know what he's pulled me out of. And it's like, like, Lord, you know, I, I know, I know that you're so real because you took somebody like me Yeah. and I, I'll never go back. It's like, I'm nothing without you. And that's how confident I know of who you are because of what I am now. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why I'm so sure. And I just, these words are so, and then another thing, I think at the, at the moment when I heard this song, I was kind of going through a moment in my life where there was there was some some little drama, you know, that you see people, you know, that you you kind of go through, and then when it says your laughter scatters my enemies, yeah, and that's when I the Lord just reassures me that it doesn't matter who doesn't like you, it doesn't matter what you know you go through, it you know I'll take care of, I, I'll fight your battles for you, and I'm just like He reassures me that no matter what you're against out in this world or what I'm fighting your battles for you. And yeah. I just felt, you know, confident in that. So for me, like, I remember you showed, usually every guys, I don't listen to music. Um, hardly ever he, he listen to music. A lot of the songs that I hardly ever listen to music, but I think Sharon knows me enough where she's like, Hey, Link, can I show you the song? You know, I really like, and um, I remember she showed this one to me. And first of all, I mean, right, the strings and stuff in the beginning, I'm like, caught my attention. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, but the first line, when it says, um, you're always moving in the unseen. Yeah. I don't know why, that just like, that was so poetic, that was so moving, because it, it made me think of so many times that I couldn't see God, yet he was moving in my life. Yeah. You know, and and can I share a couple times when I have felt God move in the unseen? Mm -hmm. One time, when I wasn't even serving God, and I've shared this long time ago. If you if you've been watching from the beginning of these devotionals, um, you might have heard me share this. Um, but back way before prison, before I knew Sharon, way back, um, my son and my daughter David and Aaliyah were. This is right before I got locked up maybe a couple months, actually probably a month before, I wanted to stop my music career. I wanted to stop everything and live a normal life, you know? And um, I thought that um, I could just stop cold turkey, you know, in a sense, uh, because I, I had done some movies and some music. Here's the thing, right, that this is, I, I never questioned God about this, but Financially, I had done so good that I started to live beyond my means, you know? And what happened was, I think it was our third or fourth movie. No, I did already six at that time. That last movie before I got locked up, I was waiting on a huge royalty check from a movie and um, at the same time, a huge royalty check from a few records that I had. So 
I wanted to quit. Like a lot of people think like, oh, you got locked up and went to Jesus. You have no understanding that God was dealing with me a few months already before I got locked up. So I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I asked my parents, come pray for me. My brother, come pray for me. I am done. And um, and I thought, I'm just going to go get a regular job. I got checks coming anyways. So, you know what I mean? But anyways, (laughs) um, the movie flopped. Nothing. We got nothing. It was negative. I remember getting a statement with no check, and it was negative because we still owed the film company money. Wow. And then something happened with the music. And anyways, it was a weird situation. I had Aaliyah and Bobo. They needed milk. They needed diapers. I was embarrassed to ask my parents for anything because I was the guy with money. I was like, you know, I was, can, how can I tell my parents, hey, I need some diapers and stuff. They're like, what are you talking? Because they knew the kind of checks I was getting. You know, the first thing they were going to do is be like, oh, you've been irresponsible with your money, which I was because it was just coming and coming. All of a sudden, boom, right? Sometimes God allows a drought to come in. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of setting the stage because you'd be like, I thought he was a rapper. Why did he not have money for diapers? But the situation was a situation. I didn't have nothing. And, and the kids needed diapers. They needed milk. And I asked my parents. It was kind of late at night. You know, and my mom was like, all I have is 20 bucks, you know. So I thought I actually I thought I needed formula only. I could get the same formula for both. I think Boba was already drinking milk, but I just for Aaliyah, right? So I go over there already embarrassed. My mom gives me a $20 bill. It's probably midnight. And I go to Food for Less uh, because it's 24 hours back then. I don't know if it still is. And, uh, and then I make the realization, not only do I need formula there's no food in the fridge and i needed diapers how am i gonna do that with 20 bucks i was really stressed i'm like god seriously and i remember in my head i was not a christian yet but i'm like god i'm over here trying to do the right thing i I quit music I, i quit all this stuff i'm trying to i'm looking for work and i had no job skills and like what am i supposed to do with this you know it was you know how easy it would be to go get a pound of crank yeah. And I was trying, you know, I was trying. I was like, man, I don't want to do this. And I didn't know what to do, man. And I pull up into Food for Less. The, the parking lot was empty. There must have been five cars in the whole big old parking lot. And right where I park, I remember getting out of the car, kind of sad. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to steal diapers? Like, what am I going to do? I got to make 20 bucks and get diapers and formula. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know. And um, I looked to the floor, man. And it was a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> I was not saved. I was very active gang member. You know, because even though I wasn't selling dope, I still considered myself a gang member. I still considered, I was still repping what I used to rep. And I picked that hundred dollar bill up and I sat back in the car and I just started crying. Because I said, God, you gave this to me. Yeah. Even in my wickedness, you acknowledged him. You still moved in the unseen. Yeah. And I could go on and on and on. You know, I didn't mean to drag this story out, but this is why when that, that's just one story that just boom, like when I first heard that song, where'd the lyrics go? Yeah. Oh. Right here. You know, you're always moving in, the, always moving in the unseen. And that really jumped out at me. And then the the next one, you already know, the one that jumped out at me, where it says, your laughter scatters my enemies. It's so funny, guys. Every single time when I sing that, when I'm up there and I'm like, your laughter scatters my enemies. I look down and I I just, I hear you. You can hear me sing? Yes, I hear you. You sing that part loud. Yeah. I can hear you. Um, I don't know why, man. Uh, that part makes me so happy. Yeah, it does. Because I think, and this is why <laughs> that part means so much to me, is because, as you guys know, in the world, it always feels like Satan's winning. Let's be honest. It feels like the enemy's winning. Yeah. In politics, in the Bible, in the biblical principles that that so many people are trying to tear down, make it seem like we're the bad guys, like we're intolerant, like we're hate, haters and we're bigots and we're this and we're that. And I'm like, so sometimes 
when we see things physically, it seems like the enemy is constantly winning. Yeah. So <clears throat> I get happy when I hear when it says, your laughter scatters my enemies. Yeah. Like, like, it's like God doesn't even have to put up a fight. <laughs> God doesn't even have to flex. God doesn't have to do nothing. He just laughs and his laugh scatters the enemy. That is a powerful statement, man. Yeah. You know, I get, I get excited just thinking about that song, you know, so, and, and ultimately just the title confident, yeah. you know, the, what's the chorus say? It says, um, I'm confident your faithfulness will see me through. My soul can rest. My righteousness is found in you. With every moment left and every borrowed breath, let this be true. That all my heart for all my life belongs to you. Yeah. And, and then a third one I just realized, and I know you're going to agree. Have, it's like a Bible verse. You could read it a thousand times, but until you go through something, all of a sudden that Bible verse jumps out at you that you've read many times. Well, after we had COVID, and on the 10th day we had COVID, we couldn't breathe. Um, you couldn't re she was gasping guys like like literally I know I've said it before but she was for those of you that don't know she was like <gasps> breathing a whole day like that and I'm just like Sharon you got to go to the ER she's like no they're gonna take going, she goes they're gonna take me and I'm never gonna see you again they're gonna put me in a respirator I, if I'm gonna die I'd rather die here that's what she kept saying well, in the middle of the day, all of a sudden, my breathing got bad, and I didn't want to tell her. I tried hiding it and hiding it, hiding it. I didn't want to tell her. And finally, it was what it was. It was nighttime, ten o'clock or ten thirty. Yeah. She was worse. I was worried. I couldn't breathe. It wasn't as bad as her, but I, it was getting hard for me to breathe. And I said, Sharon, you got to go to the ER. And she goes, No. I said, Babe, I can't breathe either. Because I know, I know my wife, and she would, I know she won't go for herself. But I knew, I knew, I, I, I played that card. <laughs> I'm sorry, I played it because I was worried about her. But it was true, I couldn't breathe. And I said, I can't breathe either. And, and I'm a big guy, and I'm like, am I going to go to sleep and not wake up? You know, because it's, it's hard for me. Harder, it was harder, you know, because of my weight. And I knew that did something in you. You know, and um, I was just like, anyways, anyways, that, I'm diving into that story. So after we got over that, this part. Yeah, I won't win this battle. No, this yeah. one. Oh. The breath, the breath you exhale, yeah. sustaining me. I cried when I, when I, when I sang this, when I first came back, um, mm -hmm. the first day that I came back to the church, this was the first song that I sang when I came mm -hmm. back. And I, I'm telling you guys, um, when I took that breath and I sang this song, man. The breath you exhale sustaining me. Yeah, because it was his breath that was sustaining me, guys. It was the breath and, and it was his. I felt like I was like, Lord, breathe into me so that I can. Breathe. <laughs> yes, so I can... It's like breathe into me, Lord, so that I can be able to worship you yeah. and it was and it was crazy because only for the moments that i was up there was i able to worship and then when i'd come back down i'd feel like i'd be gasping again mm -hmm. and it was for just those moments that i'd be i'd be great you know a lot of people you know we had to go through that COVID obviously by ourselves because you have to um isolate yourself yeah. you know mm -hmm. and everybody in this house um, was sick and nobody could come obviously and we couldn't leave obviously um every night it got to the point where we were sleep separate because at first Sharon was positive, remember? And she's like, I have to, we had an extra room. So she's like, I'm going to sleep here and you sleep in our bedroom. And uh, so every night we would um, pray and we would worship. Yeah. We would sing. And we would do that every day until we couldn't sing anymore. Yeah. As the days progressed, we, we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't yeah. sing. We anymore. couldn't breathe. But I did in my heart, though. You know, and um, and we would just play worship and not sing along to it because it, it was too hard, guys. You know, so, you know, we just wanted to share 
this song confident because maybe if you haven't heard it, I'm sure if you watch us, you have, but maybe you can listen to it. And if you and if you do hear it, it gives you an insight why we don't just flippantly choose songs. We we handpick songs that that mean something. Huh? Each one. Yeah. You know, like today you did Freedom. Here is in Heaven, which yeah, we're not going to go into the story of all of them, you know, but um, it's not just like, we don't choose like, oh, that song's popular, let's sing that one or this song. You know, some of these songs, guys, are, are they're new to us, but sometimes they're old. What are you doing? I'm it. So that's it right there. That's the one I was playing for the service today, too, huh? Wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Everybody heard this for the whole service, pretty much. I know, it just kept repeating over and over and over. What are you doing? You need me to hold this? Mm -hmm. You're always moving in the unseen. The breath you exhale, sustaining me. Before I call, you know my need. Doesn't go loud. Mm -hmm. You're always going. Before me, confident your faithfulness will see me through. My soul can rest, my righteousness is found in you. With every moment left, and every power breath, let this be true. Let all my heart, for all my life, belongs to you. Here's my part. You love to scatter my enemies. You bring me joyful my morning. You lift my head. So I can see All of heaven surrounding me Comforted Your faithfulness You see me through So can rest, my righteousness is found in you. With every moment left, and every bottle breath, let this be true. With all my heart, and all my life. Belongs to you. I won't win this battle. The strength of my own hand. You're the mountain moving. 
and only you can. I won't build my life on sinking sand. You're my hope forever, the rock where I stand. I won't win this battle with the strength of my own hand. You're the mountain mover, and only you can. I won't build my life on sinking sand. You're my hope forever, the rock where I stand. 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 I'm confident your faithfulness will see me through. My soul can rest. Righteousness is found in you. With every moment left and every bubble breath, let this be true. With all my heart and all my life belongs to you. With all my heart, all my life belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So that's it, guys. We just wanted to share that song, share what it means. Hopefully you had a good uh, cup of coffee. Hopefully that blessed you. This is something she's <coughs> never done. She's never sang on a devotional. Uh, I didn't. I didn't, had no idea she was going to plan that, uh, or maybe she didn't plan it. Maybe she just did it. No, I didn't plan that. But especially after having a kiwi drink. <laughs> <laughs> but man, we appreciate each and every one of you, all of you just <clears throat> watching, you know, and um, and uh, we're just going to continue to do what it is that we do, you know, and and that's just worship God. You know, we love Jesus, worship Jesus, seek after Jesus, follow Jesus, preach yeah. Jesus, teach Jesus, you know, and that's the priority. That's the only priority. The Bible says he shares his glory with no one, Amen. you know, and we always got to keep him first. Keep the Lord first, not your family, not your wife. And you may, might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, here's the thing is that you can never truly put your wife and your children in their proper place until you put Jesus in his proper place in your life. Well, the because thing, then then you can really be the man or the woman you're supposed to be. Well, the thing is, without the love of Christ, how can you love others? Yeah, exactly. You know, in order for us to be able to love our spouses and to love our children, we need yeah. to have the love of Christ in order for the earth, in order for us to be able to love them, you know, and, and God is love. When people, you know, when people go around and they say, well, you know, um, you know, well, you got to love your spouses, you got to love your children, you got to love. Well, guess what? You know, how do you how do you attain that yeah. love? It's through the love of Christ that you're able to, you know, you got to be able to love yourself in order for you to love others. And how do you attain that love is by, you know, the love of Christ, because he is love. Mm -hmm. So that's the only way, guys. You know, I think we say that all the time that... Mm -hmm. People will benefit from you if you love yourself, and you can only love yourself if you have Christ in you, because He is love. And let that, let that, uh, let that flourish from you, because He's the light in you. You know. So yeah. remember, Christ in you, Romans six mm -hmm. eight. You know, Amen. you're you're identified in Christ, guys. Yeah. Also, look out this week. We have a couple more. I'd say I was going to say interviews, but I don't. I consider them conversations. Yeah. So we have, we're going to have at least two of them this week. One of them is going to be um, Gunner's trainer, and the other one is going to be Brother Joe, man. Uh, Brother Joe, if you don't know who that is, we talked about him. Uh, he did a previous uh, testimonial interview, and um, he came, showed up at church, had a great time with him. He said he really loved the service. 
Um, he I, really likes chile rellenos yeah, in Hawaiian. Yeah, I really love his heart. You know what I mean? His heart is is um, is awesome. Yeah. Um, and, Amazing brother. Yeah, and, and he just came and, and fellowship with us and came to he service. He felt like and, a big brother to me. Yeah? Yeah, he reminded yeah. me of my big brother. If you don't know um, his story, I would suggest you... I'll put the link on the description box because... Um, we're not going to talk about his story. We're going to talk about some other stuff, but it's 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 going to be a better conversation if you know his story. Because I told him I don't want to re- repeat that whole story all over again. Yeah, you know. So um, I'll put that on there, man. If that's something that interests you, that way um, it'll be it'll, it'll be more exciting when you do see his our conversation pop up. Yeah. So all right, guys. God bless you. Hi, and, guys. We love you guys. Yeah. Bye.